fixed in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. This is from the first stanza of the Charles Wesley hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Welcome this morning. Please know, whoever you are and from wherever you are joining us, you are welcome as we gather separately to raise our praises in worshiping God our Creator. And may every heart be warmed by God's presence. And let us show love and kindness to one another. This service of worship is being brought to you by the Jagged First and East End United Methodist Churches in Altoona, Pennsylvania. My name is Clara Ferguson. Also assisting in worship are Elaine Hallett, our organist. Sue Estreit is recording the service. And Rosemary Ellis is also assisting as liturgist. Telling the story, Witnesses to the Faith is the sermon series that Reverend Fred has prepared for our services in Lent. As we journey to Holy Week, Reverend Fred will bring alive witnesses from the past offering portrayals of five from the history of the faith. Each will give witnessing to faith. Today, we will meet the third person in our series, Didymus, who was ready to follow Jesus even when he knew danger lay ahead. May you be inspired by the testimonies presented each week. May you also be inspired to share your testimony. Reverend Fred would love to hear from you about your testimony. Good morning. The prayer of confession. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Such a simple statement holds such powerful truth. And contemplating that truth is what the 40 days of Lent are all about. It is time to examine our sinful nature. Let us contrite prayers, confessing our sins, as we consider the magnitude of Jesus' sacrifice dying for our sins. At this time, I will offer a prayer of confession on our behalf, following which we will have a time of silence that each may offer up their own confession. Let us be in prayer. God of grace, we confess that we have elevated the things of this world above you. We have made idols of possessions and people and used your name for causes that are not consistent with you and your purposes. We have permitted our schedules to come first and have not taken the time to worship you. We have not always honored those who guided us in life. We have participated in systems that take life instead of give it. We have been unfaithful in our covenant relationships. We have yearned for and sometimes taken that which is not ours, and we have misrepresented others' intentions. Forgive us, O oh God, for the many ways we fall short of your glory. Help us to learn to live together according to your ways, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us raise our individual confessions to God. Psalms 101, 103, verses 11 through 12 tell us, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he move our transgressions from us. By God's grace we are forgiven. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all of this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you are going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Wow! Did you see that? My goodness! Did you heard what she said? What Jesus did? Wow! He, he just upset the tables and uh, took those uh, whip and just drove the people out. Money was scattered everywhere. Birds were flying all around. It was amazing. Jesus went into the temple courtyard and, and saw what was going on and, and, and he just let loose. It's a side of Jesus that people don't often see. People think of Jesus as meek and mild. And he's as gentle and as loving as they come. But when it comes time to get something done, Jesus takes action. And he does, doesn't sit back and sit around. He, wow. He cleared that temple courtyard in just a few minutes. People were all really, really excited about this and what he had done. Well, many of the people were. The Sadducees, the priests, the Pharisees, and uh, the other religious organizations, they couldn't get together on even the simplest things. But now, they're united against Jesus. They're all together in this. We want to get rid of it. He's upsetting, as you might say, the apple cart, but the treasury tables and the uh, bird, let the birds out that were there for the sacrifices. It, it was was something to see. It meant something to see. But but let me pause here a moment and excuse myself. Pardon my manners. I I'm bitterness. I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself when I came out. I was so excited, but I I'm, I'm called bitterness, but my name is Thomas, and you might know me more by the name Thomas than you would bitterness. Uh, bitterness is my nickname, which means twin. But even if you don't know that, you might know Thomas, and maybe you're not all that familiar with Thomas. I was with Jesus in his earthly ministry. I was one of the twelve. And if you don't know my name, that's all right, because I'm only mentioned a few times in the scripture. I am mentioned with the twelve when Matthew and Mark and Luke each recorded the 12, and the 11, when there were just 11 of us in Acts, I was listed. So, when the list of the disciples, that was as many times as all the rest that I was mentioned in the scripture. But, I was also mentioned, and even though John didn't list me with a, a list, John mentioned me a number of times. One time, 
This was after we had observed the Passover, the, the, the night of, of the Passover supper, when Jesus had done something new. He had passed the bread around and he passed the cup and he said, eat, drink. This is what I have done for you. I, my body is broken and my blood has been shed for you to forgive us of sin. And afterwards, as he was talking, he said something about, I'm going to prepare a place for you and something about knowing where he was going. And I spoke up and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? That's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Of all the things that John wrote about him, I'm the one who asked the question. Anyhow, I was listening. But even before that, when Lazarus was sick, and Jesus got word that yet Lazarus was not well. As close as Jesus was to Lazarus and his sisters, he didn't get up and down. Didn't do anything in regards to that. And later when he got word that Lazarus had died, then he decided he would go. Now, Lazarus and Mary and Martha didn't actually live in Jerusalem, but it was not far from Jerusalem. And Jesus decided to go after Lazarus had died. Wait a minute, what are you doing? He thought. Those are your mortal enemies there in Jerusalem. They're looking for any excuse and any reason and any way to, to get rid of you. said, let's go, we can go and die with him. And when I spoke those words, I met him. But it didn't quite work out that way. And then, when we got there, Jesus indeed went to see Lazarus. He'd been in the tomb for several days. But he raised him from the dead. I thought that was something when he cleared the temple courtyards. When he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus did. Until that point in my life, the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And it was almost the Passover, and it wasn't about a few days before. Jesus rode in to Jerusalem on a donkey, on a colt. And people came out, and they were cheering him, and oh, it was so wonderful and so exciting. Everybody welcoming Jesus into Jerusalem. With this kind of reception, what can his enemies do? Oh, this was, this was great. But if you know the story of Holy Week, People were cheering him on his way in. But on Friday when he was being tried before Pilate. And Pilate even said, I can find no fault in this man. And he gave him a choice because usually at the Passover, Pilate would free one prisoner. So he brought out the meanest Scruffiest, toughest, nastiest guy in the prison. Barabbas. Stood him up beside Jesus and said, Who do you want? And they cried out, Barabbas! Barabbas! I know he wasn't well liked by the Romans, but he wasn't well liked by his own people. But they called for Barabbas. And when they said, What do I do with this fellow? And they said, crucify him! Crucify him! They shouted just as loudly for his death as they had to cheer him on the way in. And then, I, I, I don't know. Often that's told the story. It's so far. They beat him. 
all those amazing things Jesus had done. Everything that he had done. Not just what I mentioned here this morning, but the way he treated people, the way he loved people, the way he dealt with children, with the leper, the outcast, with everyone. So I need to get out and go. Oh, I don't know where I'm going to go. I just need to get out. Philip and James, that's the other James, obvious son, they tried to convince me to stay with them. I've had enough and I need to go to bed. I finally returned and what do you know? The others were, were so excited, almost like the women were that morning. And when I came in, they said, He was here. He's alive. What are you talking about? I said, Jesus was here. What? Are you hallucinating? Are you 
account their dream? What's going on? Jesus was dead and buried. They stole a body. What are you talking about? And they insisted that Jesus was right there with them. He spoke with them. I said to them, unless I see his hands and his side, and I put my fingers in his hand, and my hand into his side, until I can do that, I'm not going to believe a word you're saying. I'll admit, I wanted to believe it. I'd hope it was true. But how could it be? That's impossible. Jesus, I know he raised others from the dead. Lazarus was the third person I saw him raise, raise from the dead. But to raise himself, how could it be? Eight days later, we were all gathered together. And Jesus appeared. And the way he appeared is just as they told me it happened the first time. And he spoke to me. And he called me my name. And he put out his hands and said, here, reach out your hand. And I said, my Lord and my God, it is true. You're alive. My Lord and my God. I couldn't believe it, and yet I can believe it. It was happening. And life suddenly changed. From the despair I've been feeling for the last week plus, something new. In fact, I didn't mention the one other time that I was I was mentioned in the scriptures was a little later after this. Several of us were, or a number of us were in Galilee, and several of us decided to go fishing one night. Peter was not sure what to do, what did what he knows best. He said, I'm going fishing. I'm not a fisherman, but I went along with them. I knew that the others knew what they were doing, and I could help out the best I could. We fished all night. Nothing. But that wasn't as important that we had or didn't have anything. It's that we were doing something. But that morning, someone called from the shore and Asked if we had any luck. Of course, Peter is the one that shouted out, No, we didn't. Not a bit. Money. Nothing. And the fellow said, Cast your nets on the other side. And amazingly enough, Peter did. Peter was an experienced fisherman. People didn't tell him how to do things. He knew what he was doing, and yet he threw it on the other side. And from the way I understand it, that was the greatest catch Peter had in his whole life. When it comes to fishing, he had reached the zenith. And yet, Peter, when John told him that, oh, that was the Lord, he didn't stick around. He let the amateurs like me help get the fish back in as he swam ashore. And that story is based around Peter, even though others of us were there. And yet, because I was 
turn it back. The peaceful way. The truth and the life. And as I tell my story, I want to share one very important lesson. If you haven't gotten from what I said already. Do not neglect the gathering of faith. You see, even though being in Southern Alpheus and Philip tried to get me to stick around with them, I took off. I wasn't with them. I was gathering. And so I missed out. They were rejoicing. say, well, I don't need so-and-so's company and so-and-so's support. But maybe, maybe you do. I might not need you, but you might need me. You might not need me, but I might need you. But you need God's people. Supporting. It is not what brings Christ among us, but it is the response to Christ. And when Christ comes, we are to gather together. For two or three are gathered in my name, he said. There I am also. So the lot he said. Thank you, Thomas. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Thank you, everyone who is supporting the ministries of Jagger First and East End Churches. If you are worshiping with us and would like to consider a gift as an act of worship, you may send um, your offering to either Jagger First UMC at 1801 Pleasant Valley Boulevard or East End UMC 405 East Hudson Avenue. And both churches are in Altoona and the zip code for both is 16602. Giving is a blessing to both the giver and the recipient. Let us pray. God of grace, multiply these tithes and offerings so that this church's ministry and mission radically change lives and create new evangelism opportunities. We pray that these gifts may help all your children build a temple within their own body that brings the honor and praise to you. In the name of Jesus, who went to Calvary, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
joy or concern included during worship, please contact Reverend Fred by Friday with email or text. Phone number 814-599-8104 or F-R-E-D-E-H-I-C-K-O-K-1-4 at gmail.com. Let us pray. Lord of hope and justice, we have come this way to worship with so many concerns that are on our hearts and weighing down our spirits. We feel the bands of the world's claims on us tightening around our hearts, suffocating our spirits, driving our thoughts and actions. We live in a culture which is encouraged to be greedy, to go for the gold ring, to scratch a card for riches which may lie in wait. We rush to the counter with our dollar and our dream, and then we wait on the edge of our seats to find out if we have been the chosen ones. Lord, help us to break the bonds that instant riches and instant gratification have on us. Help us to remember that you have chosen us to be your witnesses to hope, peace, love, and justice in the world. Break the chains of our own impressions that cause us to place possessions before following you. This day, patient and loving Lord, enable us to look into our lives at the chains that bind us. Free us to serve you, and in serving you, help us to discover the joy of discipleship and freedom that no riches or treasures can provide. Amen. Pray ye now the word of our Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As I share announcements, uh, I want to share a couple of thank yous. First of all, I want to thank those who help with the service each week. Uh, not everybody's the same uh, each time, but I everyone and this week I got a note uh, we have one person that often sends a note to me when she sends in her offering and in the note this time she uh, shared her appreciation of uh, the portrayal of John who we call the baptizer and she said make sure that all the ladies that help you know that I appreciate what they're doing and so all the ladies that are present and even the ones that aren't here, uh, my wife gives me about going over to the church with all those ladies every week. And uh, so uh, I have to give her an accounting of who's who and what's what, but that's all right. That's, anyhow, um, the prayer of confession, uh, as it's been each week for this Lent season, uh, from faith, faithworth.org. Uh, and the morning prayers from ministry matters. This is the last reminder that I'm going to give you for ordering Easter flowers uh, for the East End Church. Uh, you need to send your order payment, order and payment to the church by March 13th. And by the time I make the announcement again, it'll already be past the due date. So uh, this will be the last time. Each pot of flowers is $11. Your choice of lilies, mums, or hyacinths. Um, the upper room for March and April and the March, April, May daily bread are available. If you uh, want to pick up uh, at Jagged First, please call the church office to see when you can pick it up. If you're from the East End Church, you may call uh, me and uh, arrange when you can get it. Next Sunday, we have two special offers. 
for both churches, it's up for Sunday. Up for Sunday is what we, some of you may remember, is one great hour sharing. The past several years it's been renamed uh, because where the, where the funds went um, and still go is to the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uncor is uh, ready to go when their presence is requested of all kinds of disasters all around the world, across our country and around the world. When we're asked to give a offering for something in particular, whether it's for flooding in a particular area or earthquake or um, refugees, whatever, when you give your offering to that, 100% of your offering goes to a bank. Because during uh, the Uncor Sunday offering, that offering goes to pay the expenses for what they do, so that all the administrative expenses, I should say, so that all that the offering that you send in for any particular uh, purpose will go toward that. Um, so, uh, and the other offering is for January 1st. It just happens that both of them are on the second Sunday this year. Uh, the, for this particular month, the second Sunday is the offering for the community lunch. And uh, ask that you uh, give them both your consideration. And thank you for, uh, there have been a number of you from both churches who have been faithfully supporting the ministry of both the Jagger First and the East End churches. And now as we go forth, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.